I introduced the concept of regulation of gene expression in the previous video. I hope you have seen it, you have understood that what exactly is meant by regulation of gene expression. What are the various methods or what are the various stages where the gene expression can be regulated. And as I told you in this video we will be focusing in our, on our syllabus that means we have to study primarily about the prokaryotic organism that how a single cell prokaryotic organism like E. coli is able to regulate its gene expression. So that means the uh, basic thing that we are going to discuss is prokaryotic uh, mechanisms that regulate gene expression and I told you that you must understand at your level at class 12th level that this is almost exclusively done at initiation of transcription or I can broaden this term that basically we are looking at regulation of transcription to regulate the gene expression. So this is, this is what a prokaryotic cell will employ. So almost all regulation will be at this level and as we have already discussed that this would mean binding of RNA polymerase on the promoter on the template strand and moving along the template. So these are the two things binding or moving along the template that we will like to interfere with. So this is a very simple organism we are talking about you know we everybody calls the spider man as our friendly neighborhood I call E. coli as our friendly neighborhood that means this is the bacterium that lives inside my body I have studied a lot about E. coli so you will be you will now not be surprised that why majority of the experiments in molecular biology if require a bacterium as an organism for the experimental material they always invariably choose E. coli. So what is the reason about it? Is it different from others? Is it more complicated, less complicated or it has some unusual, uh, unusual feature? The basic answer is that we know most about E. coli. We know uh, uh, much about E. coli and therefore we are very, very comfortable uh, working with E. coli and because if I am doing an experiment, I will look at my comfort and therefore the choice of the experimental material becomes critical for the success of an experiment and because I am very comfortable with E. coli so invariably I will like to choose this organism unless and until there are some specific requirements and I may require some other prokaryotic organism. I hope this is besides the point you have understood uh, your subject uh, and, and now we are looking at the problems of E. coli. Now E. coli the preferred energy source is glucose. So as in the case of human beings as well. So that means if you want an instant energy you will actually like to use carbohydrate and in your body basically you are using blood glucose. So that means glucose is a preferred energy source for E. coli like us but it can metabolize lactose as well. Now this is a capability of a microbe. We know that microbes as a group exhibit maximum metabolic diversity. This is, this is given in your chapter number 2 class 11th NCRT biological classification. So bacteria as a group exhibit maximum metabolic diversity. So we are not surprised that the first living organism on this earth was a heterotrophic bacteria and they have persisted in time and till now. So that means they have been very successful. One of the prime reason would be their capability of surviving in extreme environments, different types of environments and capable of metabolizing almost anything. So this is a very important need for survival. So we know that it will like to use glucose. Suppose both are available then it will use glucose and somehow find a way not to use lactose. We will dwell on this question in the later video. So what I am saying if I am providing E. coli, E. coli remember is only a cell. So if in the environment there are, glu there, there are present glucose as well as lactose so it will find a way of not using lactose but glucose which means lactose will be used if either the concentration of glucose is very low or it is absent and obviously 
be that the lactose must be present only then it can be used. So, we are saying that okay, glucose is not there, lactose is present, it has the capability of metabolizing lactose, but the preferred source is glucose. Let me remind you at the outset something very, very, very simple. If you metabolize lactose, you actually get glucose plus galactose. So, that means again you are getting the preferred source. I hope this thing is clearing up something in your mind. Always try to study the subject. Repeatedly I have told you during the course, do not study for the next exam. You study for the, you study for the knowledge that you gain out of the subject and that makes the journey very, very enjoyable. Otherwise, it becomes a burden. You cannot cram up everything unless and until you develop an, uh, an interest, then you will not be giving your best effort to it as well and it will become a monster in your mind. The task will become too complex, it will become too complicated, it will become too huge and then there will be panic reactions and then the suboptimal results are very likely to happen. So, the idea is to understand this. So, we are saying that, that it can use both. Now, because there is a specific circumstance when it will try to use or prefer the use of lactose and we know that every metabolic reaction in a living cell is catalyzed by an enzyme. This is a line of your NCRT in biomolecules. That is why I repeatedly tell students that before studying genetics, please look at those two chapters, biomolecules and cell cycle and cell division. Very, very important stepping stones for understanding genetics clearly. So, what we are saying this lactose will be metabolized. So, that means it will require some metabolic reactions and each metabolic reaction will be catalyzed by an enzyme. So, that means there would be some enzymes that will be produced by E. coli to metabolize lactose. Now, does it make sense to make this enzyme when lactose is either not to be used or not present? Say for example, if lactose is absent, then why should a cell make an enzyme that will be involved in the metabolism of this substrate? Are you getting this straight or not? So that means these enzymes in other words must be made only when it has to use lactose and needless to say by this time we are very comfortable with the idea that since almost all enzymes are protein there must be some genes in the genome of this bacterium that will be that will be reflected in the formation of this enzyme. So these genes are expressed at these as these enzymes. Now we want to regulate this gene expression. That means I want to make enzymes only when I have to make lactose or I should say the E. coli has to make, uh, uh, make use of lactose. That means lactose is available, it has to metabolize it, only then these genes must be allowed to express and the gene expression is obviously this protein which is enzyme. I have discussed in the previous video again, please see it if you have not. So, this is what is, 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 is a problem uh, that is being faced by a very, very simple organism like E. coli. I hope this is very, very clear. Now, now uh, that means, let us see what is the status of lactose in this pathway. So, when you metabolize lactose, so that means you will be breaking down lactose into products. So, that means this becomes the substrate of the pathway. And therefore, I am trying to say that these enzymes will be formed only when the substrate of the metabolic pathway is present. This is what I am trying to say. Or in other words, I will go to the extent of saying this, that this substrate will induce something into the E. coli that it will be starting making these enzymes that are actually involved in the metabolism of lactose. So, we are looking some enzymes getting induced, the formation of them getting induced by the presence of the substrate. So, if the substrate is not there, this is not going to make the enzyme. If the substrate is present, then it will induce something and that induced induction will lead to the production of the enzymes that are actually required in the metabolism of lactose. I hope this thing is absolutely clear. And now let us call these enzymes as inducible enzymes. So, I am calling these enzymes as inducible enzyme. I hope this makes sense. So, E. coli has some enzymes which are 
actually inducible they will be formed in the presence of the substrate of the pathway or i should rather say that the substrate of the pathway will induce their formation so this is how it will try to regulate the inducible enzyme now the second thing is that e coli can synthesize an amino acid which is tryptophan from parent compound which is called as chorismic acid and it takes five step for this formation which means the beginning beginning thing is chorismic acid this is the molecule that e coli will use ultimately to form the end product of the pathway which is tryptophan you know about tryptophan it is it is an amino acid so that means in five pathway a b c d and then the final thing would be tryptophan so this this is the end product of the pathway now so please remember again i am i am absolutely trying to clarify the thing in this case lactose was the substrate of the pathway this time i am not looking at the substrate i am looking at the end product of a pathway so have you understood the difference between tryptophan and lactose lactose was substrate this is the end product of the pathway now it is very easy to understand that there will be five enzymes there will be five enzymes that will be in, uh, included in the formation of tryptophan and correspondingly there will be five genes now this is absolutely clear to us now we are absolutely sure what we are talking about so this is a metabolic pathway these five enzymes are involved in the synthesis of tryptophan from chorismic acid and they are the expression of these genes because enzymes almost always are proteins so this is absolutely clear now suppose i give e coli tryptophan then what is the need of this pathway so take it very seriously try to understand what i am saying at uh, this time i am giving the final product to the e coli cell now i am asking you should it start should it continue making tryptophan the answer is no that means if i give this time the end product of the pathway it should stop making these enzymes i hope it is getting through to you so this time the situation is different here i gave the substrate and it started making the enzyme that is why i am calling it as inducible this time i have provided the final product of the pathway and now i am saying that they should stop making it so this type of system is called as a repressible system and these enzymes are called as repressible enzymes so these enzymes are called as repressible enzyme so there are inducible enzymes in e coli there are repressible enzymes in e coli already you are seeing that the unicellular organism is is having its plate full there are so many problems for a simple unicellular organism and now yeah can you imagine the complexity and the variety that we will see in much more complex organisms and eventually in higher classes you will learn about the regulation of gene expression in a very complex organism like us which is human beings so that is not the end of the story for e coli so for e coli there is there is something else to contend with there are some enzymes that must always be formed so there must be no stoppage in making these enzymes these enzymes or proteins are actually vital for the very survival of the organism say for example these may be the uh, these may be the proteins that are actually used in say for example uh, respiratory chain so that means cell respiration chain requires some protein and this cannot stop so there are some other enzymes which should be made continuously by e coli and these type of enzymes are called as constitutive enzymes so this is called as a constitutive enzymes and we are talking of these enzymes being constantly formed and these constitutive enzymes are produced by a set of genes which are actually called as appropriately you can understand what we are saying housekeeping genes this is keeping the house in order keeping the cell alive so these are the enzymes that should never be stopped they must be continuously formed now can you appreciate the problem a unicellular organism is actually facing so some enzymes it has to make only when the substrate is present 
some enzyme it has to stop producing if the if sufficient amount of end product is present and some other enzymes actually must be continuously synthesized so namely there would be inducible enzymes there will be repressible enzymes and there will be constitutive enzymes and again let me remind you that these enzymes are the proteins that are the expression of the particular gene and we are trying to regulate this gene expression we will want to make these enzymes sometimes sometimes we don't want to make the enzymes some Sometimes we need to increase the rate of production of the enzymes, sometimes we need to actually reduce. So there will be variability in the rate of production as well. So this is what is happening in a prokaryote. So prokaryote may be a very simple organism, but this is the, this is the protocell actually we are talking about. The, the, uh, you know the heterotrophic bacteria was the first cell that was formed on the surface of the earth and we know that the entire diversity of the life has been produced from this common ancestor of the entire life and this is what is evolution of of evolution of life all about a magnificent story of unity in diversity in the organisms that means you know from your ncrt that all living organisms past present and future they share the same genetic material which is dna but to varying degree so this is very very fascinating we will see the formation of atp in a particular manner in in e coli and that thing is actually continuing to us as well and i must remind you something from your class 10th ncrt evolution cannot be equated with progress it certainly has not led to the development of a perfectly adapted organism on this earth so therefore it and nature does not improve anything nature selects the best variant all these things when mixed into when we understand what is happening at the cellular level makes the reading of biology not only very very interesting but very satisfying as well i hope you have understood this problem now now, now as per your syllabus in the next videos we will actually look the exact thing what is called as the lac operon we will give you an example of a particular particular apparatus where the gene expression is regulated and we will see the mechanism of lac operon which is a very very important question not only for your board exams but for your neat exam as well